200 people gathered on Thursday night to shine high power flashlights is what you saw there on the windows of people who are being held. Um, we're talking asylum seekers, about 60 of them uh, who are in these uh, temporary accommodations. Their leader, this is fun, is a guy named Johnny Tobacco. Which just sounds like Joe the camel, like runner up. Like this is like what they were pitching, and they're like, no, nah, the camel's better. Johnny Tobacco, who's a Bitcoin turned Newsmax host and wears an oversized blue pinstripe suit and slick back hair, stood on a truck bed and bellowed in a great gravelly voice through a PA system that was turned up so loud that this reporter's ears were still ringing hours later. This is according to Vice. Tobacco is one of the organizers, conceded in a short interview later on that the new dec- the decibel level was by design. The organizers wanted to send a deafening message to their new neighbors, you're not welcome here. And so again, this is all because uh, New York is experiencing an influx of migrants seeking asylum specifically and interestingly from Venezuela, which we can get into a little bit. There are numerous um, temporary housing shelters around the tri-state area. There are only two in Staten Island among many in other places, Um, but Staten Island notoriously, uh, other than Pete Davidson, which I thought he fixed that place, has a lot of Republicans. Um, and there has been uh, other other protests on Staten Island. So 10 protesters were actually arrested for trying to block a bus carrying asylum seekers in New York. One of the protesters also was ass- assaulted an officer. And it's just fun, Ravana, because I've you know, I kind of came up politically in New York, done a lot of protesting in New York. If you have a decibel level, like uh, amp sound amplification that is above a certain level, or even if you have sound amplification, um, you will get arrested. Like you, your entire protest will be deemed illegal. You will be arrested. Um, obviously, these guys are blocking the bus, but like, it's just wild to me that they are allowed to get away with this to the degree that they are, and that I mean, we'll see as it as they're. Uh, as the insanity continues. Um, But yeah, just I guess reactions to this type of protest. Yeah, it's particularly heinous. Um, These are the same people who will say in the same breath that they want people to come here the right way, the legal way, and then they'll do these sort of protests towards asylum seekers who did come here the right way. They did follow the legal process of seeking asylum. They've done the right steps. These are not undocumented immigrants, which it's wrong to treat them this way anyway. But these are the people who are championing that idea, which by the way, I've worked in immigration law coming here the right way as far as immigrating here goes is damn near impossible. Specifically, yeah. it takes about 20 years for some applications to be processed depending on even if you have family members here, it's yeah. not easy to do that. Um, so it's so heinous to be standing outside. And we've had this in Chicago where I am too. We've seen a, a massive influx of asylum seekers, particularly because of the busing programs of Florida and of Texas. They'll tell these people that there's housing waiting for them. And I just saw, because I live close to one of the priest precincts, uh, police precincts where they're keeping the asylum seekers here in mm-hmm. Chicago, they have them sleeping in tents. Yeah. Outside of the police precinct, these people are, are being treated like less than dirt. They're being mm-hmm. promised all these things. They're literally being trafficked by by these governors of these these right wing uh, Republican states, and then they're being treated by dirt when they get to these these what are supposed to be blue states that should be more welcoming to immigrants. It's every step of the process is sad, especially when you think about what they've suffered through. To get here in the first place, uh-huh. you know, I mean, to say nothing of uh, citizens who also sleep in tents, and mm-hmm. that the right doesn't give to, you know, whatever it doesn't care about at all. Like, oh yeah, they came, they were born here, and they're sleeping outside. Do you care about that? Do you want to house those folks? No, no, we don't want to do that either. Um, what's interesting about this particular protest is actually these guys won in Staten Island. They won. Um, Basically, a shutdown of this particular facility. They were handed a victory when a judge ruled that the city's decision to house asylum seekers in the school was a violation of a decades old zoning regulation for homeless shelters in residential areas. The judge ordered that the facility be vacated, but City Hall reportedly plans to appeal that ruling. So again, this is them. They sort of already won, uh, but that's not enough. And in fact, whenever there are anti-immigrant protests, you know who's going to show up. 
Uh, it's the same people who show up to school board meetings uh, every time there's like gay pride month. The Proud Boys, and in fact, the Proud Boys have been touting their newly formed Staten Island chapter. This week, another group, the Nationalist Club, active in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, and Maryland, posted a photo of an earlier Staten Island protest with the caption writing, these migrants will assault our women and girls, attack our men and boys, and replace us in our own country. The only solution is to organize against this invasion. Um, fun? No, they're not gonna replace you, because um, here's the thing. They're gonna work, unlike whatever you do, which is just sort of like coast off of, I don't know, your parents' money or uh, you sold a business. Um, I don't know, whatever it is, you got your Brooks Brothers khakis on. <laughs> You're a sad person. Migrants seeking asylum? No, they they just want to contribute. They just kind of want to live their their lives. They, in fact, they are not going to be at school board meetings shouting at teachers for supporting gay students. That's not what they're going to be doing. The last thing I'll say on this, Ravana, before we move on, is that you know people think that this is going to be an issue, sort of ramping up towards the election, that they're going to hit Biden on it, etc. And I just feel like there's one very simple solution, especially when it comes to asylum seekers from Venezuela, which is help Venezuela, like. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to topple the government, stop sanctioning the government, which only impacts people, and try to figure out, try to work with Venezuela, try to aid Venezuela, no strings attached, right? Like there, this is not hard. There's a reason that people are actually migrating from that country, um, which is so interesting because it's like we're trained by the right to like, you know, oh, we accept all. Cuban migrants, anyone from a so-called socialist country, we'll accept, except for Venezuelans. Anyway, final thoughts. Um, yeah, I first of all, I totally agree that we just need to stop messing with Venezuela <laughs> and stop trying to uh, install an unelected and unpopular president uh, under the guise of promoting democracy in the country. They don't want him. Stop trying to stop trying to make Guaido a thing. <laughs> um, that's number one. But number two, if you'll notice the names of these organizations, they're literally like. Waffen SS, <laughs> Moms for Waffen SS, Nazis of America. That's national, <laughs> what was it, nationalist, socialist, or whatever. They're literally calling themselves Nazis and they're doing blood and soil. They're saying that they're coming here to uh, rape our wonderful white women and they're yep. trying to replace us. I mean, there it is Nazi rhetoric. These are Nazis in America. And that is a much bigger threat than any migrant has ever been to this country. 